Are you a deviant? You know, like those of us who binge watch serial killer programs, laugh at the stupid shit people do, and revel in anything adult? Well, you found your people. Join us as we crack open the door to the padded cell and release the insanely stupid, the weirdly wonderful, and those who choose to live outside societal norms. We'll delve into the strange, the macabre, the sexy, and the outrageous. So, if you're a deviant, then you have your place with us in the padded cell. Good morning and welcome to episode 55 of the Padded Cell podcast. 55, fucking you know. hell. <laughs> well, I actually had to consult my notes before we went live just to make sure that it was episode 55. <laughs> There's so fucking many of them now, I just can't remember where we're up to. And it's a very rainy day out there, That's isn't it? Oh, it's Bloody Nora, we got absolutely soaked <clears throat> out there today. It's like bouncy rain, isn't mm-hmm. it? Have Big you, drops. Have you seen what's going on in America? <gasps> the hurricane? Oof, yeah. Helena or something, isn't it? Something like that, isn't it? Some God, of the clips I've, I've seen. I mean, I've seen, obviously, some hurricanes you know, on mm. TV and all that. But this is like live on Facebook and TikTok. This is like real yeah, lives yeah, yeah. and real properties mm. being destroyed. When you see these weather programmes, and you're like, oh God, that, that's a bit shit, isn't it? Fuck, that must be devastating. Yeah. But when you're actually seeing somebody's TikTok or their Facebook, yeah, yeah. and it's their house that's being swept away, it like really the, brings it home to your life. Some of the clips are like from the Titanic, like when the water's just like gushing mm. in. Really bad. Um, and there was one as well, was it Luton or something more recently, more local? And um, there's a big flood there. And going down the hill, it's this log, basically a tree had fallen. And it was going at speed down the high street. Can't remember where it was now. I've seen it somewhere local in yeah. this country anyway. <clears throat> really, really bad. The day after so, yeah, tomorrow. Freaky weather. <laughs> I love that. That I film. Love boss it. film. That. So anyway, good morning to everybody over on Facebook. Hello. And good morning to everybody over on Patreon, watching on YouTube. Uh, how many have we got over on uh, Facebook? Facebook? 25. 21. 26 25? on YouTube. Oh, okay, and 26. Oh, Excellent. Gone to 21 now, yeah. Good stuff. So we're going to be keeping people on Facebook just for a little bit. But if you want to join us for the rest of the episode, you need to go over to patreon.com forward slash by the cell podcast. Uh, in the meantime, today is the 30th of September, if you hadn't realised. Did you know it was the 30th of September? I thought we were in October. I was convinced. I'd done this thinking it was the first of October today. I was until the group chat this morning. Oh, so I was doing this the, the, on this day. It was first of October. I had to quickly change it this morning when I realised it was the thirtieth of September. <laughs> so tell us so, something interesting that happened tomorrow. So <laughs> yeah. on this day in sixteen fifty nine, long, long time ago, have you heard of the novelist Daniel Defoe? Yeah. Yeah. Name See rings a bell. Yeah. Okay. So we penned loads of things, but one of them was Robinson Crusoe. And today was supposed to be the day that Robinson Crusoe was shipwrecked in his novel. No, no, no. Uh, and he remained there for 28 years. What's the film with um, Tom Hanks and he gets shipwrecked? Castaway. 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 <gasps> with Wilson. Wilson, the, yeah. the football with the hair and everything. Yeah. Oh, it's bloody brilliant. That was a great film, that, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. Basically, it was a cast of one, Hanks. wasn't it? Apart from the beginning and the end, it was a cast of one and Wilson, the yeah. ball. And he just carried it. He carried it the whole way, didn't he? Yeah. Takes, yeah. takes a good act as a carry really, film really, on your really own, good. doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so, uh, a couple of little fun facts about um, Robinson Crusoe and uh, Daniel Defoe. So, Robinson Crusoe was actually supposedly inspired by a real-life shipwreck of Alexander Selkirk, and he spent four years on a South Pacific island before getting found. Those islands down the South Pacific, some of them are really, really remote. Mm. Mm. There was one, I was reading, to go off topic a little bit. Um, and one of them was known for being, uh, they all like being cannibals years mm. ago. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, and also, Daniel Defoe um, released this politically, um, like a satire type pamphlet, um, inciting rebellion amongst the people. And um, they put him in a pillory. A pillory. Um, but he was pelted with flowers and he got the cabbages and tomatoes and everything else. But this amazing um, you know, novelist, Daniel Defoe, was put in a pillory. Also, do you know what a pillory is? No. I was just that early. You do no. know what a pillory is? <clears throat> I, I, I because people know. call it something different. Do people over on Facebook or um, YouTube know what a pillory is? While, uh, while these two are thinking. Don't be looking it up, you fucking cheese. No, I'm just Don't thinking. Don't you dare. I'm just thinking. No, no, you're not thinking. Your fingers are moving. Back away from the laptop. Fuck off. You've typed it in, haven't you? doesn't help. Not bad. Right, anybody on Facebook? Covered no with hairs, especially fine, no. soft ones. No, somebody said lovely. Stocks. Thing Thank you very much. People are saying stocks. Okay. So, oh, it's a, yeah. we actually use the words interchangeably. 
and we shouldn't really. Because a stocks, people think a stocks is the one that you put your arms and your head through and mm -hmm. you get pelted with some arsehose and everything. It's not. A stocks is something that you sit down and you put your legs through. Sometimes you put your legs and arms through as well, but your head's not in there. So you're sitting down oh, and your okay, legs yeah. are just in this thing. That's a proper stocks. A pillory is what we've got and what everybody else calls a stocks. A pillory oh, yeah. is the one that you put your hands and your head through. Yeah. Learn to so there you go. There you go. So Daniel Defoe mm -hmm. was put in the put in the in the pillory, but say stocks then. <laughs> put in the pillory and pelted with flowers. I think that's because people just didn't agree, basically, with the fact that he was in the pillory. So they pelted him with flowers. Oh. So, so, excuse me, last night I was at um, a concert in Manchester um, and the band were Fairground Attraction. Have you ever heard of Fairground no. Attraction? So I spoke to Jim yesterday and he said, and he's like, do you know who they are? And I was like, don't know. And then he sang me one of the songs and I was like, oh yeah, of course I do. Yeah. So you've heard of Perfect. It's got to be. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's I just couldn't Fairground have ever told you their name. Um, and when I was growing up, they were one of my favourite bands. They're quite folky. Really, mm. I mean, like country folky, yeah. Um, not something that you think I'd be into, but when I was younger, there's there just something about Fairgrounds Traction that I really loved. And Eddie Reader, who's the lead singer of Fairgrounds Traction, has got the most underestimated voice. She literally has got an instrument and she fucking knows how to play it. Very, very, very good. And it was funny because I was 14 when I first started, 13, when I started listening to Fairgrounds Traction. And obviously I'm 50 next year. And everybody else in the audience were my age and older. Quite a lot older, actually. And all the bands, the original bands were there. I've put mm. a, a few extras. Uh, and Eddie Reader, I don't know how old she is, but uh, I think she probably is in her mid-50s, late-50s. And all of them were like, you know, getting on a little bit. And they fucking rocked it for two hours, no interval. Just got on with it. And it was a really, really great show. Really, um, I drank a little bit too much beer as well. I wasn't intended on drinking as much beer as I did. Do you think that's why you were sick this morning? No, I wasn't sick this morning <laughs> because of the beer. That's a different kind of vomit, that mate. Oh, no. But it was a really, really great <clears> gig. And uh, it was just good to go down like memory lane and listen to all the old songs and that. And they brought a new album out as well, just good. And I didn't meet anybody at the concerts. So I can't oh. even say hello to anybody. <laughs> but if you were there, <laughs> hello. Sarah says that's her karaoke song. Perfect. Yeah. It was my karaoke song for years and years and years until I did it to death and then it's not my karaoke song anymore. I can sing it really, really well, but you know, you just do it and do it and do it and everybody mm -hmm. asks you for yeah. it. Yeah, so don't do it yeah. anymore. Got right, I'm going to turn everybody off on Facebook. But before I do, um, there's any comments over there that we need to know about and where everybody's from and stuff? Not a great deal, no. Sure, uh, yeah. So, uh, <laughs> Cammy has said, love the chain mail necklace. Yeah, well, I read that out before. Yeah. yeah. Did you? I did, did you yeah. read it out? I did. Guys, I'm getting off Facebook. Yeah. Bye, Facebook. <clears throat> That's it, you're gone. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck no, I'm so sorry. Ryan was supposed to be watching Facebook and, and commenting on things. <laughs> but so, you're watching it. Yeah, basically, everybody's just saying uh, hellos and stuff. And they're Some also um, talking about the history of the pillory and the stocks and stuff as well. That's really great. So I'm going to turn you all off. Go over to patreon.com forward slash Pads Sell Podcast if you want to watch the rest. If not, see you on Facebook later on. See ya. Okay, so, so Lorna's just said Eddie Reader's <coughs> mum was nearly her nanny. Oh. And she comes from her nearest big town. Oh, really? All oh, right, okay. No way. Little fun fact. Sorry, my little slurp though. Right. Big slurp. <laughs> So I was talking um, oh, about a couple of months ago, I think, uh, that I was going to do some wing walking for Widow Wise Guys yes. for our charity. Um, but it was supposed to be in September uh, before the weather got too bad for us. They've had hoop and cough. you got a day left. And they wouldn't let me do it. The weather has been horrific. This yeah, it's been bad. Be it's um, not been a nice So September. I've not been able to book it in or nothing because of the hoop and cough. They won't let me go up in that pressure. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to have to postpone it. So there were, there were people asking about it. So... There you go. I am going to do it. I just can't do it yet because I wasn't medically well enough to do it. I mean, at the end of the day, I'm going to be attached to the outside of a plane mm -hmm. doing loop the loops and all the rest of it. I've got to be 100%, haven't I? And apparently hoop and cough uh, is, is not a good thing to do when you're <laughs> wing walking. And lastly, before I go on, um, in our box of tricks, we need to look at it again. Yeah. Um, there was a pack of biscuits oh, called well, White it, Tim oh, Tams. Yeah. If there's any Australians coming over to the UK anytime soon, or any people from the UK who are coming back from Australia from holiday, I want to put an order in, please. <laughs> Tim Tams, uh, white chocolate biscuits. I have never tasted anything like them in my life. They're like Oreos. No. Like chocolate on the outside. No. 
God, no. No, they're just like <laughs> a biscuit what? with white chocolate around the outside and white chocolate on the inside. But the white chocolate is absolutely divine. I've never tasted it like it. And it was in that box that we got yeah. from Jess. <laughs> Demolished them. <laughs> Fucking hell. <laughs> they're Tams. So I think Ryan's Tom looking shoes. up online what Tim Tams are. You're getting oh, all like, sorts of like, weird it stuff. It looks like a penguin. It's like a penguin. Like it white is. Penguin. It is, but it's narrower and it's white chocolate. So if anybody's coming back from Australia or coming over from Australia... Um, if you can bring me back some Tim Tams and I'll pay you for them and all that. And if you're not local when you come over to the UK, I'll pay postage. They're that nice. They're really nice. That's a bit beggy, that really, isn't it? Yeah. Well, so mm. at least you're it. Well, yeah. Send me Tim Tams. <laughs> <laughs> They're lovely, though. Really look. They do coffee ones as well, but the Ooh. white ones were lovely. Right. So I'm going to get into our segment today. And if you can just um, keep a look <laughs> on the... Um, the comments for us as we go. What are you on now on your laptop? You're not, well, you're not doing anything. No, I'm going to close this so I don't distract it, it was Googling Tim Tams. Yeah. So you can gag in on what I'm saying and stuff like that. Oh, you can buy Tim Tams in Tesco. Fuck off. Oh, you're like, always in Tesco. Like Australian Tim Tams. Well, they said the normal chocolate ones. Don't know if they do white ones. Okay, I'll have a look. Cat says send me ones. the address. Uh, okay. She's got you. Nice, mm. nice. Right, so today is a BDSM Lady C episode, hence why I am dressed in my black garb. Um, and today's episode has been a little bit inspired by a comment, uh, well, a comment, a, a message that I got from somebody. And I've had quite a few of them, but this one was recent. And she was asking how she gets into pro domin. Okay. And she's had no experience mm -hmm. whatsoever on the BDSM scene. So that triggered me into talking about pro domin today because uh, it's something that makes me go a little bit <clears throat> when somebody says they want to, I want to be a dominatrix. Okay, yeah, great, yeah. So what experience have you got? None. Why do you want to do it? I'm skinned. <laughs> yeah. Wicks me. It wicks me because this has been my career for years, something that I've worked really hard at, getting good at, and somebody thinks that because, because they're skinned, they can just... Um, pick up a flogger and charge £150 and you know, flog somebody with it for an hour and it'll be okay and it'll work. It doesn't work like that. That, By the way, the person that contacted me, it wasn't in that vein. Um, but a lot of the messages <clears> that I do get are from people who are just like, yeah, I'm a bit skinned, so I like, I like the look of what you do, so um, I think point that, in the right I direction. I think it'll be easy. Yeah. I'll do it. <clears> so, for those watching live, um, tell me, do you think that pro-domination, so a dominatrix, do you think that is sex work? Is it classed as sex work, first and foremost? Um, I'll just leave that a few seconds because they're a little bit delayed. Um, because the person who contacted me, sorry, not this one, another one, um, she asked me my opinion because she didn't want to be seen as a prostitute. I'm like, mm, okay. So what are people saying over on YouTube? Have they caught up yet? No, not yet. No. They're still talking about Tim Tams. They're still talking about biscuits. <laughs> <laughs> what do you guys think? I think it'll come under the umbrella of sex work mm -hmm. for me. I Very think... different from prostitution. Yeah. I think there's a, a massive range now of things that will be included in sex work. Mm -hmm. mm. So there's a couple of comments coming up there. Depends what you're offering as a service. If it's not sexual, no. Mm -hmm. um, think they was already on the scene, then no, not sex work. Mm -hmm. Kelly says yes. Okay. Um, someone saying under the umbrella is perfect. Sex so, work is so broad and vast that I'd say it comes under the umbrella. Okay. So yes, it is. It is classed as sex work. So even though uh, most pro domes don't include sexual okay. services at all, it's still classed as sex work. Because even though what I'm doing might not be sexual to me, that person who's come along will probably go and like bang one off yeah. afterwards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, walk away all horny and stuff. Yeah. So to them, to a lot of clients, it is sexual. What they get from what I give them is sexual. Mm -hmm. So it's classed as sex work. And also, um, a lot of the time, one person in the arrangement is naked. So you're seeing them fully naked. They might get aroused during mm -hmm. the session mm -hmm. not in my session I'll try and get rid of that fucker <laughs> get the ice bucket get that ice bucket out <laughs> um, so yes it is sex work and I think people need to if, if they're going to go into pro-domination they need to be okay with that yeah mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think some people might not be. They're like, well, I'm not a prostitute because I'm, I'm not having sex or, you know, I'm not allowing them to, like, you know, wank over my tits. Um, but it is mm. sex work and you need to be okay with that. 
Um, and you are classed as working in the adult industry, um, which sort of goes hand in hand with sex work as well. So, you know, adult workers, sex workers. But what is the difference between social domination and pro-domination? Go on, let you guys have a little think about that. Apart from we charge. Yeah, that, that was going to be my go-to. I think <clears throat> you kind of, you'd expect a certain level of um, knowledge, skill. Mm -hmm. mm. Professionalism. Professionalism. You know, like definitely. if I do something with a person, I'm very open in saying, I don't know everything. Yeah. But I think if you go into someone as a professional, mm. they expect a certain level of... Yeah, expertise and yeah. skill, definitely. So when you are domin um socially, there's, no, there's not as much expectation unless you put yourself up on a pedestal and then people expect a certain standard. Yeah. But you're doing it socially, so it's under your terms, their terms, whenever you want, wherever you want. You're not charging for it. You haven't got to be perfect. You're enjoying yourself at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. But like any hobby, uh, it can become a job. And that is what pro-domination is. So we are professionals. We've got a skill set. A lot of us call it a craft. Um, I call it a craft. So when all, all the years I've been building up my skill set, um, I'm not saying that you know, other people can't do it. Of course they can. But it, it feels like a craft. And it's something that I pass on to other people I, I train other people and you can't really fake it when people are paying you money so um on average in the uk people charge from like 120 to 250 quid an hour depending on you know, what it is that you're going for and how long um, and because people are paying that amount of money they expect a certain standard and if you're not given that standard most of them can see it straight away because they've been to other domains mm -hmm. Um, and so they, they know what's good and what's not. And if you try and fake it too much, they see right through it. And I've actually known guys who've come to me and told me later on that they've stopped a session in the middle of it because it was that shit. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And that is because we've got people who want to earn a free few extra quid, yep. who think that putting on a cat suit and a pair of boots and holding a, a cane is all that you Watch. need. <laughs> um and they're going out there pretty dangerous, actually, mm -hmm. you know, and these guys are, I just see through them within 15, 20 minutes, see right through them. And like I say, they have just actually stopped the session and said, I want a refund because you're shit. Yeah. I've had people tell me that from other domains. So um, why I want to talk about this is uh, just to sort of explode a few myths, but also educate people a little bit in if they want to go down this path, how they do that. Um, and why you shouldn't and why you should, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. So things to consider. So if you, if you were going to go on and be a professional dominant, what sort of things, people over on, on YouTube as well, um, what sort of things would you need to consider? Have you got some messages over on YouTube that we can have a little look at while people are thinking? Um, so Tyler said, a pro would be totally professional, high level of experience, knowledge and expectation. Um, it's not just having a dominant friend or partner knock you around. It's a professional service. Yep. Yeah. 100%. Harry said, if he went to someone who classed themselves as a pro, they better know what they're doing. Yep. Everyone's pretty much just saying experience. Yeah. So um, you do need to know what you're doing. At the end of the day, um, we need to remember that we're dealing with people who need to walk out in one piece mentally and physically. Mm -hmm. And so um, if people are, are paying you, you probably you might go a little bit harder or a bit more intense than you would do in a social situation. So you need to do it in a way that you can still walk away in one piece. So what things you think you need to consider then if you were going to go and be a pro dominatrix or dominant? Have a little think. Anybody over on YouTube commenting on that yet? No, it'd, be, it'd be different for each, what you call them, clients? <coughs> <coughs> no, but if you wanted to go and be a pro-dominant, what would you need to consider before you started doing it? A lot. An awful lot. Yeah. Yeah, but what sort of things do you think? <coughs> well, you'd have to set up your own boundaries, I suppose, wouldn't you? Stuff mm. you're comfortable with doing. Yeah. So that is one of the biggest things that comes up, actually, as a pro-dominant that I've come across over the years. When I've been training people, when I was finding my own way, at first, because you are like a sponge, and even though you're good at what you do, you're still learning all the time. We're always learning. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. still learning now. Excuse me. <coughs> um, <coughs> sorry, what did you just say? I've just lost my train of thought. Learning. Oh, learning. Yeah. 
So we're always learning all the time. Um, and if you ever go into a situation like, I know everything, I know everything, I don't need to learn anymore. I'm, yeah. I'm the best at everything. That's a dangerous place to be in, a very dangerous place to be in. Once you think you know it all, then you need to stop, basically. So you're always learning. Yeah. Um, so where's that message gone? Um, Rosie's mentioned legal liability. Okay. Um, so I am going to go into the legalities later on, but that is probably the most important thing that you yeah. need to consider because it's not legal. Okay. So you need to work around it. So it's sort of the turn a blind eye because it's consensual, mm -hmm. but obviously we know there's a fine line. Yeah. So, you know, you need to practice safely and stuff mm -hmm. and with eyes wide open with the legalities to make sure you don't fall into a trap, basically. Yeah, a lot of people say, and obviously safety for them and for you. Yeah. Um, Oh, that was what you're saying. Playing within boundaries before mm -hmm, locking yeah. train of thought completely. So early days, I found myself doing things that I might not have really wanted to do because yeah, I yeah, wanted yeah. to learn. I wanted to please. I wanted to prove myself as a dominatrix. And I thought, well, they're paying me. So if they're paying me, I need to give them what they want. Yeah. No, absolutely not. That's the one thing you need to get out of your head straight away. You play within your own boundaries, your own limitations. And you also need to enjoy it yourself. What's the point in doing something to somebody else just to get the money uh, when you're not enjoying it yourself? Within a couple of weeks of doing that, you'll be bored stiff, yeah, resentful and frustrated. So you always play within your own boundaries, within your own skill sets and do things that you really enjoy. Because if you're not enjo enjoying it, the submissive who is paying you will know pretty much straight away that you're just going through the motions and they won't like it and they won't come back. Yeah. So like with anything, be true to yourself and think about why. Why are you doing this? Is it just for the money? If it is, don't do it, basically. So people have said safety. We're yeah. going to talk about safety in a little bit. Uh, knowledge of anatomy. Yes. First yeah. aid. Yeah. So safety comes, first aid comes under safety. Expertise, I've said, so that is knowledge of anatomy um, and knowledge of how you use the implements on different parts of the mm -hmm. anatomy, what's safe, what's not all that kind of thing, which we're not going to go into today because I've done that before. Um, any other ones come along? No? Um, what people might think. Um, obviously, friends and relatives finding out. Yeah. yeah. Safety for yourself, sussing uh, out if someone might be unsafe for you. Yeah, yeah. So basically reading the other person. Absolutely. So um, again, I'm going to go into some of these later on. But um, the other thing I've put down here is kit. Your kit costs a fortune. Yeah. yeah. Now, you can get away with cheap kiss when you're playing socially, but when you're a professional, people expect you to use good quality kit, mm -hmm. which is well-maintained and stuff like that. Now, at first, you need a few pieces. I've said before, all you need is your hands and your brain, really. Um, but toy-wise, you know, a handful, three or four things at first, good quality things, that's all you need for an hour. Yeah, You don't need much. Yeah, But we all know that a good baton, a really good baton, could cost you 100 quid. Easy. Easy, if not more. Yeah, 130 more. quid. More. more. Yeah. So, you know, there's an investment there as well. Now, I said before what people charge per hour. Now, you think, God, that's good an hour. You know, 100, 120 pounds an hour at, at the very least. But it's not per hour because there's a lot of prep beforehand. Mm -hmm. You need to get to know your client before they walk through the door because be, you, need to, you need to know they're potentially dangerous going to be a threat you need to know their motives you need to know why they're coming and um, to establish if they're you're the right dominatrix for them uh, if they're going to be safe in mm -hmm. your dungeon if your skill set is enough for their expectations mm -hmm. basically so i used to have quite a, a lot of conversations beforehand i get a deposit off them first because I hate to say it there's a lot of guys out there who just give you a little ring with their undies around their ankles, cock in hand, asking all these questions about pro-domination. I have a little cheeky wank down the phone. And um, I got onto it pretty quickly. So I used to say, yeah, no problem at all. I'll have a conversation about your booking. If you're serious, I'll take a deposit off you. And then when I've had the deposit, I'll speak to you as much as you want. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's sourced the wheat from the chief. And then I'd have email conversations, sometimes over the phone, depending on how I felt, if I felt a bit peepily. Um <laughs> And that would be my chance to establish if I want to session with them. Yeah. And it's really, really easy when somebody's thrown 150 quid at you to disregard that fact. Do I want to do it? It's 150 yeah. quid. I'm skint. I need to do it. No, you've got to want to do it. Um, 
And so literally a couple of hours, sometimes over messaging, um, talking about the session and planning it. Then sometimes you need to buy in specialist kit for that session. Mm -hmm. So if it's a medical session, it might be needles, gloves, that kind of thing. It all mounts up, all your expense. Then the actual session itself, one, two hours, whatever. And then afterwards, there's always aftercare. So like I said to you before, we need to make sure that these people are fit to go back into the real world. Yep. And most of all, be able to drive, because most of them drive to get to us, because they come a long way. Um, and so you need to give them like a bit of a cool off time, sometimes half an hour. I've had more before today. Someone who was tripping on the life fantastic afterwards and mm. he's longer he was not fit to drive so all in all it could be like five or six hours mm. really yeah and then your expense of your kiss so your hourly rate goes down pretty quickly yeah. but then you're checking in a few days later as well yeah aren't you? exactly so. that so people think oh you know it's dead easy money um it's not even now you know if i was to take on a professional client now because i don't really do so much anymore i haven't got a lot of time there'd still be a lot of prep and i might still have to buy in equipment mm -hmm. um, so now it's the, you don't earn loads of money so before i go into these subjects a little bit more we're going to just move on to our little dangly bit we're going to cut it in the middle mm -hmm. and then we're going to go on to the other bits and bobs that i just talked about there mm -hmm. so you said you are going to do our little dangly bit today, yeah. didn't you? Oh, Nance is doing <coughs> our dangly bit. Have you got? Is your head still killing your it love? It feels like it went a little bit from serious to I'm going to blow your mind. It's okay. <laughs> this, um, is, this is where we roll on the podcast. Isn't it? So we are going to have a little insight into Nancy's inbox. Oh God, what inbox from what? On all platforms. This is mainly fab. So Ooh. you you tell know, people what that is. We don't like fab mingers. No, but it's a website called fab singers um it's a fucking death trap it's disgusting <laughs> i didn't consent to half of these messages <laughs> but that's how we roll but basically we've signed up there again just to have a little nose and see mm. what's going on obviously we use um oh swing club for yeah. actual yeah yeah you know events and things like that but there's thousands and thousands and thousands of people on fab <laughs> <laughs> You need the element of surprise, never mind, looking behind the shoulder. So I've just picked, like, on Fab, as I've got a single profile and I've got a couple's profile, right? So the couple's one gets, like, genuine messages. The single female profile is just oh my God. chaos. After so that, I'd lock it up. I bulk delete every message, like, each day, and I still get thousands of messages each yeah. day. It's just... I used to hate Fab. Hated it. But it, it's worth it just for the just for this, for the laugh. Go so, on then, hit me up. These are in no context at all. These are just that random. Brace yourselves. <laughs> <laughs> Enough to make a blind man want to see again. Some of your photos, you know, Nancy. Need any help making some more? Oh, oh yes, please. Thanks, easy oh, fella. Oh, fucking hell. <laughs> Now, I don't know if this one's seen the podcast. Oh. You ever had a guy smell and lick your bum clean? <laughs> a huge turn on of mine. Oh, my God. Look at his, look at his fab profile picture. What's his fab profile picture? It's just a knob. It's just, it's just a knob. Has <laughs> he got a knob by it, though? It's just, it's just an angry there's willy. There's no sky control or a can. It's just a penis. Just an angry willy. It looks very aggressive. It's an aggressive willy. Oh, will you look aggressive? Don't you think funny. sometimes they just look like... No, thanks. Some of them are just ugly, to be honest. Oh, God. Hello, Nancy. Brackets. That's my ex-wife's name. No! <laughs> <laughs> Why are you reading that? <laughs> so... Oh, what? So, it'll be good to scream that again as I make you orgasm. Ugh. I'll be in Anglesey tonight if that's not too far from you. Let's get past this... Um, and see if you're even vaguely interested before we get to that. Wow. Wow. Horny from Anglesey. Yeah. When I fuck other girls, I think of fucking you. Oh. Ugh. Mm. Thanks, Mr. Athletic. That's fucking creepy. Mr. Isn't it? Athletic. I want to sniff your arse. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of arse sniffing going on here. He's in the pod. <laughs> and then the next one. I want to eat out your arse. Oh, your sweet arse. <laughs> your sweet arse. Wow. Oh, my God. <laughs> Oh, these creatures. <laughs> no, no, it gets better. Don't. Hiya, beautiful. I would like to put my tongue deep in your arse and feel your shit on my tongue. Oh, 
Oh. No, no. Oh, it's no. Monday morning, Lance. You started so well. You will never regret giving me a chance. <laughs> Look at that one. Can I reply to this? Honestly, I need your help. <laughs> you need someone's help. <coughs> Oh my god! Right now, for a little bit of context, obviously I got new tattoos a couple of weeks ago. Spider titties, hence the new name, Spider titties. <laughs> Let me fall into your web. Oh, oh, thank wow. you, pegging guy. That is. Well, I know someone. <laughs> yeah, let me fall into your web. I couldn't have tried harder Did with that one. Selfie. Yeah. Compared to the messages, like <clears throat> yeah. Oh, that's a long one. Is it wrong to admit that you look younger and sexier than my thirty-six-year-old wife has ever been? Actually, you look younger and sexier than my 25-year-old sister-in-law too. <gasps> what is wrong with people? Oh my God. Name and shame. Thanks, Cam. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that is ridiculous. Right, now this one is one of my favourites. <laughs> no, but what you can't say, what you can't say is this is one. You know, and people copy and paste. Oh, get the and same I get, message. I get this message every single day on yeah. Fab. I've, got, I've had it about 19 times so far. Look at his picture. <laughs> hey, I ain't Fred Flintstone, but I can make your bedrock. <laughs> Wait, he's about 62. Oh 57. The gym. <laughs> <coughs> I'm done. I am done. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, bless his little cotton socks. Oh. He, he just oh. he just looks like don't do more get him what off he looks like a lollipop man and he's saying that he, he didn't make your bed rock wow the best one I ever got on Fab was um, can I make you pregnant oh I get that all the time yeah. and I, I just went back you. I went it'd be the immaculate conception mate I haven't got a womb <laughs> <laughs> you block me <laughs> so Luna lad says <clears throat> hey how's it going might sound a bit strange we don't judge you but I have a balloon fetish and I'm trying to find someone willing to pop some for me. Ooh. Sometimes it's easier just to be forward. So for me, it's a huge turn on watching a woman pop balloons in different ways. Nails, sitting, squeezing, stamping. Okay. You can be fully clothed. S oh, send wow. them the fucking reel. What you should do is say no problem at all. £150 yeah, yeah. an hour and bring your own balloons. Yeah, I'm a professional. <laughs> <laughs> a professional balloon popper. <laughs> no way. Cheers, hon. <laughs> 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 if you shop in Lidl I can get you 20% off shopping at Christmas <laughs> this is on fab swingers wow <coughs> no contacts no previous oh messages God. just well, cheers hon cheers hon so, so you hadn't sent her out them before that no he the, probably thought you were talking to somebody else before he said the that the little right? marketing team have just said listen one, he just needs to get on fab get on, get on fab and stop <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll be living it up on social media yeah. you get on fab <laughs> <laughs> you look fucking unreal I'm a young virgin, hung and full of cum. <laughs> <laughs> young, how young though? Legal. 20. 20. I'm full of cum. Piss off. <laughs> He's having three wanks a day at 20. He isn't full of cum. Sorry, Cordelia. <laughs> oh no. Love your voice, hon. Hon. You make my dick pounce like a puppy. <laughs> <laughs> dick pounce <clears throat> like a puppy. I don't even know what that means. <laughs> Pounce. Yeah, I get that. But like a little hobby puppy. Like her. Uh, like a I think. Boing, boing, boing. No, anyway. I, I get the puppy, but how did your dick do that? I don't know. Have a little you do that thing where you make your... Yeah, make like it bounce. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So what he's on about. Yeah. Little twitch, little dick twitch. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just, it's a feat of strength. So, <laughs> yeah, that's just a little... A little, a little glimpse. glimpse into my inbox oh, and people mate. wonder why I don't reply, don't reply to anyone. Yeah. Why would you? Thing is, some of the messages though, you think, oh, that's one been sent to everybody, yeah. or it's just a piss take. But then you get to something like, he's deadly serious. Yeah. Absolutely <clears throat> serious. F fat life can be just as bad. Oh, yeah. And the worst ones I used to get, well, on Fat Life and Fab, I still get on Fat Life every now and then, is somebody talking through a whole scene. So, oh, I, I, yeah. talking to a whole BDSM scene, but on Fab, <clears throat> talk literally oh, yeah. There's some really, blow really by blow, literally blow <laughs> by blow account <laughs> of what they'll do to you and how you'll feel after it all and all that kind of thing. It's horrible. I really, I'm just left dry. Yeah. Disgusting. Barren. <laughs> you grew <away. laughs> Yeah. Gotten, so, for those guys on Fab who have dick pics <laughs> with remote controls next to the dick <clears throat> to show how big it is and sending really sad messages, <laughs> it's just not working. 
think think of other stuff. Hey, Harry, was it Do you? you? Better? <laughs> what? Harry said, put me in touch with the little fella. I don't even get 20% of Christmas and I work there. It was Harry that sent you the message. <laughs> get out the inbox, Harry. <laughs> Brilliant. Harry, dirty dick. Brilliant. Uh, is that it of our messages? Yeah. Right, so swiftly moving on. Thank you very much for that. Oh. Just don't go on fab. It's a cesspit. An angry willy. Yeah, fab so bad. It's a cesspit. <clears throat> Quick hello to our uh, OGs and to our new Patreons, Sam L, Cody, Becca, Mazzy, Nikki, Danielle, Mads, Helen and Ragnald. Ragnald, that's like a, that's um, a sick name. That. It's brilliant, isn't it? Like a Norwegian name or mm, like a Viking like a type Nordic. name, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he said fit. Well, that's in my eyes. <laughs> oh, a name like that, Ragnald. <clears throat> would you, would you like Warrior. Warrior. yourself, Ragnald. <laughs> you know, warrior. It's probably not, but great name. Probably looks like Fred Flintstone. So. Great name. Oh, don't you? They make your bed, brah. Okay, so we're just going to go back Every to day. our pro dominant segments, just carry on from uh, where we left off there. <clears throat> so, I uh, said before that we need to know the motives for why people come to us as pro dominance. Yeah. Why do you think we need to know them at most? Because they, they want a proper service, don't they? They want mm. <clears throat> yeah. a, a to Z, everyone proper professional. Yeah. And they know they can come to someone and get what they want. <clears throat> Where it's going to be a proper experience yeah so there's that but also like with any scene you need to be prepared mentally and physically and with your kit so you've got the right stuff mm -hmm. you know if you're anything like me I've got I've just got enough stuff to fill rooms yeah. literally <clears throat> I couldn't bring that to every session so you need to plan it out you need to know what is going to be used on the day yeah but also where motives are concerned I want to know where their headspace is why are they coming to me is, are they coming to me just for a jolly, for a BDSM jolly, for that high? Or do they want to be punished for something? Because I've had this. Yeah. I've talked like about it in a previous. <clears throat> mm. yeah. So there are people that self-harm but come to you for harming because they maybe can't quite do it themselves mm -hmm. or it's just not doing it for them. I have not had many of that, to be honest. Um, but I've had a guy, I'll just very quickly go over it again in case you missed it last time. He was a teacher who could not be hit hard enough and I can go for it. I have got some vicious, vicious implements and I couldn't hit him hard enough and he calls it, I don't know, about half an hour in and he stops the session but he's just not going hard enough. Swear to God, I was running across the room like fucking swinging it <coughs> <coughs> and no I way. could not do it hard enough. So we're sitting downstairs after, couldn't wait to get him out of the building, game of the EBGBs and I was like, why? Why do you want to be hit that hard? What have you done? Mm. It wasn't for the letdown. It wasn't for uh, any kind of jolly. He wanted proper punishment. Yeah. Not corporal punishment <clears throat> like we've done in, in scenes yeah, yeah, yeah. before today, you know, a, a corporal punishment role play. No, he just wanted to be hit on his back as hard as possible. And I couldn't do it. So I was like, spoke to the caretaker and I was like, can we get him out of the building as quickly as possible? I'm not happy with him being here. There's a reason and I'm not happy with it. I never ever got to the bottom of it. So from then on, I did start asking people, why are you coming to me? What do yeah. you want out of the session? Try and get in their headspace a little bit because that <clears throat> then establishes if I feel safe in their presence or not. Of course. Because I didn't feel safe with him in the end. Once he was like more harder, I was like, Ooh, I'm not feeling happy with this. Yeah. So you need to get into their headspace and figure out why they're coming to you. And also, you've only got an hour from the minute they walk in to the minute they get dressed and walk out. Yeah. Now, I know we've said about you know, aftercare and stuff, but the actual session itself is an hour. And so you need to know what they want from it so you can try and deliver that in an hour. It's a big ask because if you think about socially, we get to know the people that we play mm -hmm. with. Yeah. They're friends. We might go drinking with them. We've chatted to them loads before and we already know what sort of person they are before we actually hit them with anything. But when somebody walks into the dungeon for the first time, you've never met them. You might not have even seen a picture of them. And so you've got nothing at all to go from. And you, you literally have five minutes to, to get that session off the ground, get them in the headspace. Uh, and that, I think, is probably one of the hardest things that I've had to do as a dominatrix is not necessarily um, my skill set, but applying it in the way that they want in a short space of time. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, thank you. So... Uh, the safety uh, aspects, um, there's been people over the years who have reacted differently to what I'm expecting. So if you think about guys that come in, in their head, they want to be beat to get off on whatever. But on that particular day, they might, be, uh, they might have something on their mind or they might not be able to take pain as much on that day and they can turn 
just like that. Mm -hmm. So they can turn from being very complicit to quite angry, actually. You, some, you don't know how people are going to react to pain and hitting and restraint. You just don't know. You've never met them before. And even if you had, people are really unpredictable in yeah. a stressful <clears throat> situation. Yeah. So for safety reasons, I always say to pro-dominance, restrain your client as quickly as possible. That sounds really mad, doesn't it? But you know, they're probably going to be wanting to restrain in any way as part of the mm -hmm. session. So normally I'd like, you know, get the kiss off as quickly as possible. Well, they can take their own kiss off, I'm not touching that. Uh, and then I restrain them as quickly as possible for safety reasons. And I always used to carry uh, a safety alarm as well. It was like so loud, it like smashed windows. It was really, really loud. And it's not going to stop them. But if I pull the safety alarm, it just gives them a fright and gives me a couple of seconds to get out of the room if I needed course, to. Yeah. <clears throat> Thankfully, I've never needed to use mm -hmm. the security alarm, but I'd keep that on me. Um, so the safety aspects are really important and it starts in the preliminary questions when you're figuring out who the person is. Then I always used to have about 15 minutes beforehand, if it was, they were brand new, to sit with them and chat on the level, so not in the DS headspace, about what their expectations are, get consent. Always use a safe word. Always. I know we always say it when we're socially playing, but it's so important professionally. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What we're doing really here is assault and we're gaining consent and everything else. But if somebody says to you, I want to play without a safe word, just say, you're not, I'm not the dummy for you because it's just, it's a little bit of a, um, it's a, it's a safety net. If you like, it's their way of communicating with you that they need to stop, mm -hmm. but it's also your way of giving them an out. So even though you're assaulting them with these weapons, if you like, legally, you're, st <clears throat> you're still giving them control. You're still yeah. saying to them, if you say this safe word, everything stops. Mm -hmm. So I've said it before, um, in BDSM, people think that people like me are the ones in control. It's absolute bullshit. So I might look like the person in control, but as soon as you give somebody a safe word, they're the person in control. So never, as a professional um, scene without a safe word, it's the one thing that is going to back you up if you like. Um, and you can have like written contracts and stuff. It's not worth the paper it's written on. So legalities, um, BDSM, professional charging for BDSM is not legal. Throw it out to our people live. You guys probably know. Uh, escorting and prostitution. Is it legal in the UK? Do you know? Um, quick question while yeah, we're waiting. Um, Sarah's asked, would you also... Would you always have a caretaker? <clears throat> yeah. Mm -hmm. So while you're all thinking about other question, one of the other things about safety is um, I've had loads of domains over the years who used to uh, practice out of their home. I just wow. don't know why. Yeah. Your home is your safe haven. It's the, your private space. Nobody needs to know where you live. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But that. they can't. Maybe they can't afford to go to a, a dungeon or whatever. I don't know. But I've known a lot over the years. But I've also known domains who've been stalked. Yeah. So once that. the client yeah. knows where they live, I've had somebody, uh, not me, some uh, uh, another dumb mate, have a client sit outside of her house intimidating her. Wow. And she had to get a restraining order on him in the end. So I'd highly um, advise that you always work out a professional <clears throat> dungeon space. This is the reason why I'm asking this question now, though. Yeah. What are people saying about prostitution? Um, not sure of the legality, but I'd assume not. Kelly says, I think it's legal to pay for sex, but many of the practices that make it's safe and not legal, such as the premises, working in groups, etc. Yeah. Um, there's areas in the UK that it's legal, I believe, mm -hmm. but as a whole, I think it's classed as legal. Yeah. Okay. So I think it's Leeds. There's an area. I think it's Leeds. There's an area there. They've, they've earmarked as a red light district as a, a trial. I don't know whether it's still going, to be honest with the locals, for fuming. So in the UK, I don't know about other countries, um, it is legal to provide escorts and services from your home. Mm -hmm. So somebody can come to your home and they can pay you for sex or BDSM, I suppose, but I'm, going to, I'm just going to leave yeah, it out yeah, for yeah. the moment. <clears throat> um, and nobody will be, to, be done for it. However, if that escort then chooses to do that from a premises, like let's say townhouse was a, was a brothel, it's not, uh, that is illegal. Got you. So for me... That does not make sense at all and does not keep our women safe. No. Prostitution is never going away. It's the oldest profession alongside midwifery. You're burping. 
I've just got lots of noises going. I'm <laughs> okay. sorry, Dylan. She's whistling. <laughs> um, Give me that. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so prostitution is going nowhere, but we're not protecting our our girls out there. Yeah. They're saying you can bring clients into your personal space and have sex with them and charge, but they're also saying. However, it's illegal to go and keep yourself safe and work from a premises that might have caretakers, CCTVs and other escorts working yeah, yeah. there. <clears throat> no, you can't work there where it's more safe. Yeah. Do it out your home. This fucking country is just upside down, man. I just don't understand that at all. Sure, I <clears throat> so from my point of view as a dominatrix, going back to before we were saying it is classed as sex work, even though you might not be offering any sexual services whatsoever, Working out of a dungeon space like townhouse is actually not legal. Mm -hmm. Wow. I can do it from my home and it'd be perfectly fine. But <clears throat> who in their right mind would do that? It just does not make sense. So you've got to be really careful with the legalities. Um, you can have a contract, like I said before, not worth the paper it's written on at all. They can sign it, Mickey Mouse. It's not worth anything. It's quite nice to have something in writing because it shows that there's been a conversation between two people. In case that person goes to the police and says, I was assaulted, you can, you've got something there which yeah. sort of discusses <clears throat> everything that, that, that you intend to do or whatever. But it still won't stand up in court. If that person went to the police and said, she insulted me. Yeah, I did. I, I totally did consent for flogging, blah, 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 blah. I did not consent for Canaan, though, and that left welts and I was assaulted. Mm -hmm. it's, you, yeah. you are left wide open and that is why you need to do all of your preliminary stuff beforehand to figure out is this person safe for me to play with are they gonna you know bite me on the ass mm -hmm. after this you know so it's really really important that you take all these things into consideration before embarking on professional domination and the, my, my best advice that i can give anybody is don't go straight into it Go to social events. We've talked about munches and events before. <coughs> yeah. Meet other people on the scene. Watch them. Learn from them. Get a mentor if you can. And also, you haven't got to be the master of all things. And I always say this to people, even if they're not going professional, try not to do everything all at once. I've seen it. I've seen it dozens and dozens of times over the years. And I've even spoken to some people on our team about it over the years. You can burn out and you've got nothing left to yeah. experience if you do everything. So what I'd say is if find one thing that you really love and you're really good at. So for me, it's impact and get really good at it. Be the mm. best, be the professional at that one thing and offer that as your specialist service, if you like. doesn't mean you can't do other things on the periphery, but yeah. you're not claiming to be the best at all those things. Your specialism is impact or electrics or water play or whatever. And then once you've become the best at that, then you can go to something else yeah. and be the best at that as well. So it takes time. You know, I've been on the scene a long time. So, and I'm good at several things. I'm really shit at other things as well, but I'm good at several things. But I learned those over a period of time. It takes ages, doesn't it? It takes a long time. <clears throat> and it takes the right people to practice yeah. for. <clears throat> so um, do those things. Go to events. Learn your craft. It's a craft. Please be respectful of the fact that we've been doing this for centuries passing down the knowledge, learning how to do this safely with consent and being fucking good at it. Don't for a minute think that you can pick up our equipment, put on a pair of fucking boots and fake it to your maker and charge the money that we do because you can't. There's just no way around it. You've got to do it the right way. And I find it really insulting when people say that I just, I, I'm a bit skint, so I'm going to go and whack a few people around. Especially if they don't have an interest in the They don't the even scene. want to do it. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. <clears throat> they don't even want to do it. And they yeah. go to fucking Ann Summers. Sorry, Ann Summers, but, you know, some of you hear your stuff shit. <laughs> the crops. I, you know what? So I found a, a crop in the club one day, and it was brand new. You could tell it's hardly being used. It didn't get claimed. I said, I'll have that. Use it a few times. Fucking end flew off it. It was shit. <laughs> it was shit. Equestrian shops are the best for them. They are. Definitely. Fucking unreal. Definitely equestrian shops. Yeah. So... <clears throat> By all means, if it's in the back of your mind of something you want to do, um, research it, look into it, speak to me, speak to other people. But just don't try and do it on your own with no experience because you're either going to get yourself into major trouble and somebody's going to turn on you. You could possibly be in like a, a legal issue. Um, or you might be pushed into something that you just don't want to do. And one of, the, one of the examples of that is pegging. 
Um, if you don't know what pegging is, it's basically using a strap on on a, on a boy's bum hole. Boy, <laughs> man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm waiting for it to pop and up. there's the real. <laughs> I do this quite a lot. I do say girls you and do. boys a lot. And I don't mean boy in the underage sense. I just mean the person of the opposite sex. <laughs> Fuck off. So that's what pegging is. So if you're a dominatrix and somebody asked you to peg somebody, I'm just carrying on because we haven't got long. You can just fucking laugh between yourselves. Um, sometimes they'll come and ask you for pegging. That's a sexual service. Um, if you bring somebody else into the scene and they're submissive and you, you force buy, there's force buy as a Oof. thing, that is a sexual service. Waste. So think very carefully about what you're getting yourself into. Think about your boundaries, your expertise, the cost implications, the legalities, how your family or friends are going to feel about it because you're not going to be in the closet for long. You're going to be out before you know it. It's a really, really big thing. Now, don't get me wrong. One of the best things I've ever done in the whole of my life. Hands down, I have loved being a dominatrix. Some of the things I've experienced, some of the people that I've met, some of the scenes I've been involved in, some of the people that I've toured, some of the journeys I've seen. Honestly, hands down, one of the best things ever. But it's also one of the hardest things mm -hmm. as well. And I don't even mean physically, because it can be physically, or emotionally. Just... Being a dominatrix and people seeing you as that person providing sexual services. Yeah. Yeah. There's an awful lot of negativity out there, a lot of judgment, and you need to be prepared for that. Um, and I wasn't quite, actually, I wasn't quite ready for the negativity. I didn't give a fucking shit. Now you can say what you like about me. But back in the day, you know, a little bit more sensitive. There was a time. Um, it, it got me in the feels a little bit and yeah. you know, hurt me little feelings, what people were saying. But, um, you know, you've got, to, you've got to grow a thick skin. It's just one of those things. So I hope that's been um, helpful for some of you out there who've mm -hmm. been thinking about um, how professional domination works. And that is males and females. There are some male dominants out there, not many. And most of those are on the gay scene. There's a lot of female submissives will not pay for a male submissive, sorry, a male dominant. Because uh, they get enough of it at events. There's loads of male dominants yeah. who are willing to do yeah. it for free. But there's a lot of gay men who will pay for a gay dominant lots mm. very 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 popular yeah. so if you fall into that category i hope that's helped you um and also for those submissives out there who might be thinking about paying for a professional there's nothing wrong with it um some people can't go to public events for privacy reasons or just don't want to and um, there's many reasons why people visit a dominatrix or a, a male dominant but hopefully what I've said there will help you choose the right person and ask the right questions. Because the last thing you want as a paying submissive is throwing your money at somebody and it's a waste of time and you don't get what you want or they're unsafe. Yeah. Which is, which is a really, really big thing. Yeah. <clears throat> <clears throat> so that is professional domination. Um, so just my last little thing on that is that uh, respect the profession, respect yourself and respect your clients and respect the scene. Respect goes in all directions. Remember, the person is a person and they need to walk out in one piece. Uh, and the only way you can do that is become really good at what you're doing and have some smarts about you, basically. Right, so I've got a couple of minutes. I haven't really, but I'm going to give yourself a couple of minutes. I'm going to give you a quick fetish factoid. Yes, I love ah, this. where? Shut up. Ooh. <laughs> Ouch, Charlie. Do you know <laughs> what shed... Iphilia is shed Iphilia. Mm. It's not sitting in your shed having a little cheeky <clears throat> wank. Is this something to do with peeling skin off or something? No, but I, I'm sure there's a fetish for that and I've mm. got it. Oh, when somebody's got sunburn, like, oh, oh let me peel your back oh, for you. Try and yeah. get it off in one piece. Oh, no, that's not shed Iphilia. Okay. No. no. Oh. I was thinking like shedding. So, shed Iphilia um, is also sometimes known as, hang on a minute, have I got it here? Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Toon affilia. Toon affilia. No? No. No? no? Fictosexuality? Uh, no. Dylan's had a little bit of a brainwave mm. over there. Is think. it uh, attraction to animated characters yes. or fictional characters? Oh, okay. Yeah. So shed I mean, affilia, <clears throat> toon affilia. You get it, yeah. Fictosexuality. So fictosexuality oh, is actually I, I, I'll a I'll sexuality. Go, go it, yeah. It's classed as a sexuality. <laughs> 
Um, people who are into Fichte sexuality, it's not necessarily drawn characters. It can be any um, character. So it could be like, you know, somebody like an X-Men character or Spider-Man yeah, 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 yeah. or something like that. But it's more commonly uh, a cartoon character. So tunophilia is actually the more common name for oh, yeah. it rather than shedophilia. Tune, tunophilia is a really big thing. And if you go on like the Reddit, there's loads of conversations about it out there. Do you remember who framed Roger Rabbit? Yeah. Yeah. Um, it was Jessica Rabbit, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Who was the, the singer in that? And it was played by Kathleen Turner, who's got a really beautiful, low, sultry voice. And do you know what? The way they actually um, animated Jessica Rabbit and made her dress light up all the sequins and the way she was walking, she was a very sexy cartoon character. Yeah. And apparently there's an awful lot of people that found that they were tunophiliacs <laughs> yeah. uh, after seeing yeah, Who yeah, Framed yeah, Roger yeah. Rabbit. <clears throat> and actually, a little fun fact, I don't, don't think Jimmy will mind, but if he does, so <laughs> um, when he was younger, he used to like uh, Marina from Stingray. You might not know no. Marina. She was like, um, she wasn't a mermaid, but she swam under the water, aqua marina, and she was dead pretty, big eyes. Quite anime, I suppose, nowadays. Yeah. Big eyes, unusual proportions. And he absolutely loved her. Like, really. <laughs> I could rag her everywhere if she was real. She wasn't a puppet. <laughs> a puppet? A puppet. She's a puppet. <laughs> She's a puppet! So, um, yeah. So oh, Jimmy God. was into her. Um, <clears throat> but... There's people, uh, so how do they get by in life being attracted to cartoons? They're obviously never going to have a relationship with this cartoon character. Yeah. Um, and they do have like a romantic connection. It's not just a little cheeky wank over Jessica yeah. Rabbit. They do feel an attraction to these characters. And they, they fantasise about having relationships with them as well and how it would be in their house with this cartoon character. I'm sure if they've got a partner that's into like cosplay or something like that. Oh, God, that imagine. That would be their fucking dream, wouldn't it? Oh, they'd just be, yeah, fucking all the time, wouldn't like they? Comic-Con. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it'd be yeah. like, yeah, Comic-Con all mm -hmm. day long, Walking wouldn't it? the boat. Yeah. yeah. So, tunophilia, attraction to cartoons. Did <clears throat> you anybody's into tunophilia or no. anything like no. that? It's an unusual one, isn't it? I think the I Jessica play... Rabbit thing, there's a lot of people who admit to being... <clears throat> yeah. Turned yeah. stuff. Just something very sexy about her. Um, but yeah, tuna affiliate. It's not something that I'd ever you know, be into, but there's people who want long term relationships with certain fictional characters. I don't know, looking at yeah. our graphics for their lives. Yeah. It does yeah. that, yeah. But also, this gets in the way of some of them having proper relationships with, other, with real people. Mm. Yeah. yeah, I'll get you. Yeah. 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 Got a little thing here from a girl, and uh, she said that she's into tuna affiliate. Um, so she said, uh, here's my hot take. A character has a personality. In some cases, they may also have a voice and or appearance. It's no different from how I assume loving a celebrity you can never meet would feel. Got you. It sucks that I really can't talk to him. Uh, she, she's like met this character in a game. But going in the game, giving him his favourite item, guessing a perfect interaction, whatever the case may be, always puts a smile on my face. I know it's not necessarily normal, but I'm just not attracted to real people like I am to fictional characters. It's not like I'm hurting anybody. Beyond my own occasional panning or heartache, so why judge someone for something they can't <coughs> control? Yeah, that's true. But she can't have real relationships with humans because of this. It's quite a barrier. Mm. It's, it's sad, really. I mean, she's very happy. Very yeah. happy. Yeah. But for me, it's like, you know, that's a barrier. You can't have a proper relationship yeah. with other people. Yeah. So there I get you it. Go. I mean, like, the, half the World of Warcraft player base, mm -hmm. th there's a character in World of Warcraft who everyone fantasizes about. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so I understand it, but I, I wouldn't no. think it would get in the way of a real relationship. No, because you're not getting that tactile involvement. Yeah, are you? yeah, yeah. It's weird, like. It's crazy. Weird. <clears throat> so. On that cartoon bombshell, we are going to leave you all. Thank you, everybody, for joining us over on oh. YouTube today. It's been a pleasure. There have been oh. loads and loads of comments up there today. Yeah. And I hope you've enjoyed. Um, listen to a little bit more about my life as a pro dominatrix, and you've learned something from today. Thank you as well for your dangly bit. Some crackers in there. Absolute People crackers. enjoyed that. We're going to do it. Um, I feel like that was two. heavily censored. We're going to do a take two. That, that was quite censored. So. Yeah, we need to go deep. I mean, the, the tongue of the bum hole feeling poop, that was <coughs> not tame. I mean, in comparison to uh, some of them. Okay. I feel like that was tame. For yeah. Didn't want to turn fab. you all on. So, if you're binge watching, put the kettle on, we'll see you in five. If not, That's it. we'll see you next week. I remember the lines this yeah, week. Yeah, you got <laughs> the kettle last week.
And there we have it. Another day made better by listening to the Curators of Chaos. Thanks for dropping by. And if you enjoyed the show, we'd really appreciate you sharing the Love the Padacel podcast with your friends. Don't forget to give us a follow on our socials, maybe some five-star reviews. And feel free to send us an email to medic at thepadacelpodcast.co.uk or even interact with us on Facey, Insta and our other socials because we love chatting to you. Make sure you stop by next week because, as Bowie says... I don't know where I'm going next, but I promise it won't be boring. Catch you soon. Mm-hmm.